on them for the government to go and put those monies back into the social projects, be that education, be that health care, or any other social programs that the government works upon. There are businesses in the area of agriculture which are developing, which are trying to take the agriculture uh, businesses or agriculture sector to the next orbit in the country. India has become self-sufficient. India used uh, good technologies in the 60s and 70s to become finally self-sufficient in grain. Today we are again one more time staring in the face of shortages. A second round of technological revolution is required in the agriculture field. Work is being done very fervently both through uh, private sector and public sector to ensure that the business comes into agriculture to produce the same passion and momentum that we have seen in other industries to take agriculture forward. Within agriculture, there is also a large need for uh, technology to have better post-harvest uh, storage capabilities. We are wasting about 37 to 40 million tons of wheat, uh, of uh, food grains and uh, vegetable and fruits. That needs to be secured for the nation as well. Very large amount of activity is desirable there. Early experiments are showing us that whenever contract farming is applied through technology, 64% yield is taking, uh, additional to 64% yield is taking place. Can you imagine if uh, in a country which has the largest irrigated land anywhere in the world and the second largest aerial land, if we could jump up our production by 50-60%, how well and better we can do to feed our own nation. I think the business has a role to play there. Other businesses that come to my mind straight away are in the, again, some of the new arenas. Financial services, Mr. Deepak Parik is here. Uh, he represents that sector. That sector needs to have, to my mind, a second revolution in the country as well. Here again, to my mind, private sector and technology can play a very big role. Financial inclusion is an article of faith with the government. Our political leaders are very keen that we have financial services available to the masses. How will this happen? I don't know how many of you are aware that in the last 62 years, India has been able to put together only 83,000 bank branches. We have over 600,000 villages, and we have today 83,000 bank branches. There are several tens of thousands of ATMs, but for a country the size of India, that is not good enough. That's far from being good enough. How do you take the financial inclusion to the masses? How do you fulfill the dreams of our leaders? I think business has a role to play there. Technology, especially mobile phones, are going to provide the future financial inclusion possibilities in this country. I personally believe that every person who lives in India has the right and the need to be financially included, whether they are through uh, banking services, insurance policies, microcredits for small uh, needs in the villages, or more importantly, financial security. We need to roll out financial services across the nation, and there's a role to be done by the business community. I now uh, come to my own uh, sector of telecommunications. Not too long ago, a telephone in this country was a luxury. I come from a town which had just a few hundred phones when I was growing up to a few thousand. And I still remember that there was a very large function organized for an exchange that was set up in Ludhiana for 10,000 lights. That was a very big event in the life of a very large city like Ludhiana. When I entered the telecom uh, field in the early 90s, there, was, there were less than one million total phone lines available in the country predominantly in the metros, and within that, Delhi, Mumbai had the largest share. Today, at over 600 million phone lines available in the country, and largely now in the B and C class towns, India has truly turned a leaf. After China, it is the largest uh, telephone uh, uh, country in the world. Still, the penetration is at about 50 percent, which means we have a long way to go. But the good news is that we are growing at 10, 15, 17 million mobile phone connections every month, month and month. Today, telephones are no more the preserve or the luxury for the rich or the business people. 
it is meant for the masses. Mobile phone, which was invented as a rich man's tool, has now become truly an enabler for a poor man in the village. He runs his business, he connects with his family, he ensures there is no social strife, he ensures that he is politically connected to the uh, leadership that he has, and more importantly now, through technology interventions, administration can also start to provide services, and hopefully not to distant future, direct monies for the projects like Narega, uh, coupons for food coupons in place of rations, all are going to become possibilities. These, to my mind, are massive steps towards nation building by the businesses. Watch this space, to my mind, uh, with the now introduction of 3G and uh, broadband wireless access services, the possibilities are going to become endless. If India has to become a knowledge-based society, it is important that we have a bedrock of technologies which are data-enabled, which are broadband-enabled, and that revolution is now going to start to happen within the next three to four months and will continue to uh, develop in the next three to four years. I personally believe that in the next 36 months, there will be no corner of this country which will not have an access to a broadband connection in one form or the other, mostly through mobile and, more importantly, broadband mobile. And that will allow him to access all public services, all administrative services, and it will cut down on his need to travel across district administration, state administration, or go to other places to fulfill his basic utilities, needs, and administration. The good news is that the government is rising to the occasion and connecting with the technology providers. The UID project, which is being uh, today fathered and taken forward by one of our business colleagues, Nandan Nilekani, who has now taken a position in the uh, government to look after the unique identification program is going to rely on a lot of technologies in India, and each individual citizen, therefore, will be provided by, with a unique identification, which will help the government in provision of several schemes that they have directly into the hands of the public that they are targeting. And I think this will become, to my mind, a very important service that the two arms, the arm of the government and the businesses, will provide the nation. I am very hopeful and confident that with the uh, introduction of technologies in various spheres, India will be able to use the medium of technology to lower the cost of services of all kinds. We are today witnessing, and uh, Terry is an epitome of that success, of alternate energies. Most of the work has been done through government-sponsored agencies, some uh, private sponsor agencies, very specialized agencies like Terry, but who is going to take this forward? If solar has to succeed in this country and other alternate energy resources and sources have to succeed, private sector again, businesses again will have to pay, play a very, very major role in commercializing these. World over in uh, the Western world, all these alternate energies have become massive business opportunities, and India is going to be no different. So therefore, while these technologies will be pushed through R&D and support of the government, they will be led into the marketplace by the private sector. What else should business do other than just building the nation through its own businesses? There is a school of thought which says the purpose of the business is only to do business. My personal opinion is that time has gone. The job of the business is beyond business. While it's absolutely important that businesses must succeed for people to do things beyond businesses, because that is going to be the bedrock for them to do bigger, bolder things away from business. But businessmen and business houses will have to take responsibilities. They really come in two forms. One is CSR in itself, what we call corporate social responsibility. That is within the larger means of our businesses. So if I'm running a telecom company and I have 120,000 towers consuming massive amounts of electricity, I think it's becoming incumbent upon me to find sources which are more environmentally friendly, which are more efficient. I need to 
install technologies which are not energy guzzlers. It's good for the business, it's good for the environment, it's good for the nation. A lot of work, for example, is going on in this area. We are engaging with Terry, for example, to ensure that all the towers, the mobile towers in the country, can use solar as a main source of power. India is endowed with a lot of sun. These towers are out in the open. They are out in the fields. Uh, electricity from traditional sources is uh, hard to uh, come by, and this therefore makes eminent sense. But this is truly an important uh, area, and all uh, corporates, to my mind, are working towards alternate sources of energy and making their own production, manufacturing services more energy efficient. Similarly, companies which are engaged in hazardous chemicals, tobacco, are doing a lot of work in the area of CSR. In the rural India, trying to uh, work along with communities to produce basic inputs for their uh, particular needs. And CSR is now being well tracked, well recognized, more importantly, well rewarded. The second part, which is to my mind becoming more important now, is the part of philanthropy. Corporates need to go out and do major philanthropic activities. India needs work to be done in the area of education. So much needs to be done that no government, no political leadership can do it alone. Everybody in the country, from individuals to corporates to the government, needs to put their heads together to take that momentum forward. Healthcare, especially rural healthcare, public healthcare, is in shambles. We are all aware how poor the application of healthcare is in the country. A lot of work needs to be done there. And I can talk about many other areas. There are areas of uh, disease eradication, old age, AIDS, uh, people who are not getting uh, proper treatment for their eyes. There are several areas in which uh, work needs to be done. It will be naive for the business houses to think that this is the responsibility of the government, and they can leave all this for the government to do. I think we need to combine forces. We need to bring best practices from the private sector, combine it with the government's uh, will and willingness to take it forward and do a great job around that. Western world has done a good job here. Very large foundations for the last over 100 years